hands. Right. Um, hello, everyone. My name is CCG Films and welcome to part three, the final part of this, um, my VHS collection video, um, VHS collection streams. Um, this is part three. Um, I'm going to show you the last third of this collection um, from tapes 101 to 155. I recently got a new one in the post today, which I'm going to show, which is why it says 155 um, instead of 154. So I'm going to get that up. But what I am going to do is just open up my uh, list of tapes here that I can talk about them, just I can show them and talk about them. I'm just going to get that up. Okay, I'm, I'm not going to send any links to the StreamYard because what's the point? It's just a collection video. There's no point inviting anyone to it. And I don't really want to make it any kind of, um. well, I don't really want to make it a mess in here, I think we can say. Um, I was going to stream this tomorrow, but then I realized I've got school stuff tomorrow and I was supposed to go on with a bit of school, school stuff now. But I thought if I just get this done and over with now, I won't have to worry about it. Um, but one thing I do need to show is those two and I need to get the third one out of the way. So we're going to get might as well start the, the, the stream by showing the newest tape to the CCG Films VHS shelf. And that is, I don't know when this was released, but it's a, it's a, it's a release. It's Monty Python's Life of Brian. This is the newest one to the family. Um, this surprisingly was quite cheap. It's an Australian VHS release, I figured out. Um, and it's actually in pretty good nick, um, given that it's travelled from another opposite side of the world over here to the UK. I didn't import this, I bought this from someone in Britain who obviously imported it at some time when the tape was released. The only thing that I know about this tape in terms of its release date is that it was in the 1990s. I have no idea when, and the only reason why I know that is because of when this kind of um, M15 uh, thing at the bottom here, I know when they when they came out. Um, it was in like 1989, and I think there were a few other versions from like 1989 to 1993, which this tape uh, has like a version from 1994 onwards, something. I, I can't remember when it is, but it's sometime during the 1990s, sometime during the mid 90s, I would believe. Um, the actual tape, though, since it's Australian, in case any of you are Australian and know these tapes quite well, you'll know that the um, actual tape looks like this. Um, it has a warning sticker, usually a warning sticker on the front, and then it has the name of the film on the side here, as you can see. And as you can see from the look of the labels, they've not really been ruined at all. There's two on this one, actually. So there's a warning one and there's a label underneath it. I tried to peel away the sticker a little bit to see if there's anything underneath uh, and what the label says underneath, but I couldn't seem to make it out. Um, and there it is there, Life of Brian. So there we are. If anyone does know when this version was released, because I know there's a BMG version, there's two BMG video versions of this that came out in the 1990s, and this one is not from BMG video. There's no name on the bottom on the bottom anywhere at all. But the the spine's quite nice and plain. I like I like kind of like spines like that. Quite a nice spine. Let me just turn it around so you can read it there. Monty Python's Life of Brian. So there we go. There's that first one. Um, I might. Uh, move those as well. Actually, I'm going to move the next two as well. I, ha I didn't. I don't think I've shown these ones yet. I do not think I've shown these yet. I might have done. I cannot remember if I've if I've shown these before. But if I have, I do apologise. Um, but um, here we go anyway. These are the Hollywood Nights tapes that I have of the Big Red One and History of the World Part One. Um, these both date to 1986 VHS releases. Uh, the film came out in 1980 and 1981, respectively. Um, these two tapes are surprisingly pretty rare to come across. Hollywood Nights was um, a very obscure British label in the 1980s um, that mainly, weirdly, specifically made or released a couple of stuff for children, like He-Man and Thundercats and stuff like that, that the video collection was more popular for. The video collection, if you know the video collection, you'll know that they released a crap ton of stuff for children um, back in the day. And Hollywood Nights did the exact same thing as well with a few releases of Thundercats, He-Man, um, Mask as well, a TV show called Mask, I believe. But they all re also released a few movies, and these are two of them. These are very rare. The Big Red One is pretty easy to come across. You can get the Big Red One for like a couple of quid, but I've never seen anyone else sell this Hollywood Nights version of History of the World Part 1. It does not come up at all. Um, 
the current versions that come up on eBay are the 1989 CBS Fox releases. There's like three of them. They're pretty cheap. There's like four quid um, for one of them. They're pretty cheap to get. But it is quite strange to me how this is the only Hollywood Nights version I've seen. And I'm actually kind of glad I got this version anyway, because my other version, which I showed at some point, is completely ruined. So I'm glad I've got a better upgraded version, if you will. And The Big Red One as well is a nice film. I have it on DVD. It's a very, very nice war film. You'll know that if you if you know me well, you'll know that I do love my war films. So I'm very, very, very glad to have these two uh, films on VHS. Um, the catalog numbers are actually the uh, consecutive as well. H, uh, HN7011 and HN7012. And if you can see that at the top there, there's the um, backs as well for both of them. There we go. I think the blurb on this History of the World one is the, uh, is the exact same on the preset release I have. And I think it's the exact same on other versions. I think it actually might be the same on my 2005 DVD release. For some reason, I just didn't bother changing them. The boxes are exactly the same. But there's the tape there. It's one of the very few tapes in the in my collection where I have to put it this way so that the the door is facing to the side, like here. So effectively, it's upside down. Um, the same thing for History of the World Part One here. There's um, a nice imprint in there of the company that made the tape there, Stanley Productions UK, which is a very strange name. Usually, they would be the other way around. I like to have them the other way around, where it's um. I just show you they're normally like this but for this version it doesn't work at all they just can't stay in and even when they are the other way around like they're supposed to be like this they don't hold them in very properly so they're not great boxes i'll be honest but they are quite nice releases and i do like them um so there we go uh this is the correct order it's supposed to go in so history of the world part one and big red one there so there's those two there we are next ones are pretty standard stuff um i'm not the biggest fan of um, these two films, I'll be honest, but I know them relatively well, and they're you know they're def they've definitely got their fans. This is Star Wars, a 1995, I think, VHS release of the original 1977 Star Wars film. I'm um, a little bit edited since the original, but I think it's the f it's like near enough the original that was released in cinemas in 1977. Um, but it's obviously like been updated and everything. There's an exclusive George Lucas interview, which you can probably find on YouTube these days. Um, Pretty standard stuff. It's not in the be best nick, really, honest, honestly, but I don't really pay much attention to Star Wars. It's not really my kind of thing. I do have a lot of respect for Star Wars. Do not get me wrong. I do have a huge respect for Star Wars. Um, I do have another Star Wars tape, which I'll get to shortly, but um, the uh, not really the biggest fan of them. Um, I have been looking at getting a few other Star Wars tapes, so like some of the rarer ones, but they're very expensive, and so it's probably not worth doing for the time being. But there we go. There's a few other ones from there with a very stretched 20th Century Fox logo for some reason. No idea why that's like that. Kind of weird as well. I suppose, I mean, I know why they did it. It's because they want, want it on the spine, but it looks horrible. So I have no idea why they did that. But there we go. The other one um, I have, which I have a bit of a gripe for. I'm not the biggest fan of this film at all. Independence Day. My views of Independence Day have changed a lot over the years. I originally kind of Found, I found the film a little bit kind of corny, but still funny and still kind of good to watch. It's a great film uh, when I first watched it. But looking back at it, I hate it now. I have no idea why. I feel like I should rewatch it at some point. I haven't got it on DVD, but I probably should at some point. Um, I just I just don't seem to get my head around. It. I just can't seem to get my head around about why the film was so popular when it first came out. Um, I think the reason why I found it so kind of unconvincing is that it's the fact that it shows you what's going to happen. Like that, I know that like this is a bit of an edited screenshot, but a lot of posters these days and a lot of kind of advertisements for Independence Day have this exact screenshot from the film with the White House being blown up. It completely eradicates what the film is going to show you, like because you already know what's going to happen. So what's the point in having this? The posters for Independence Day just have the ship, whatever it's called. Um, but I have no idea why they had to show. The um, no idea why they had to show that. Same original kind of label though. This also came with a nice uh, thank you letter from independent from the director and is it the director and uh, producer of Independence Day co-writers as well. In fact, there we go. The message says the success of Independence Day has gone beyond anything we could ever have imagined. We know that we were creating a very special film and are pleased that it has struck a chord with such a vast audience. Now, in the years to come, we hope that you and those close to you will have the opportunity to enjoy this film over and over again, um, which is what this VHS is of it. So there we go. It has a nice um, 
whatever sound that makes. Um, but there we go. Let me pop that back in there. There we are. How old is CCG? I am 17. It's a very strange thing to say, honestly, because many people have said to me like I'm like 25. But there we go. Um, what's next? Ah, this is a very good film. I do love this film. The Full Monty. It's a full British film. This one is an absolute classic British film from 1997, I believe. It's one of my one of my favourite tapes in my collection. Um, just for the fact that the film is very, very good. I do have a soft spot for for the Full Monty there. I'm just gonna where's that then? There we go. There's the back there. It's um hang on. It's a yellow case as well. Original embossed one as well, which I'm trying to show there. There you go. I think you can see that. 20th Century Fox. Home entertainment there. I think you can see that. Um, so yeah, very nice as well. And it also came with a little um, thing here advertising the soundtrack from Britain's favourite film. I think that, that, think that might be a bit different now, but The Full Monty was a huge success when it came out in Britain. Don't get me wrong. We, we love The Full Monty over here. It's a true British film. Really, really good. The synopsis is quite good um, as well. I really, really like the synopsis. So um and they kind of plotted the film. So if you haven't seen The Full Monty and you are British and you kind of want to see The Full Monty, have a look at The Full Monty because it is a very, very good film. Very fun, uh, very comedic, silly and goofy in some occasions, but it is very good. So there we go. What is next? It is, oh, it is Titanic. Um, do love Titanic. Um, I can't really say much about this film, honestly, because, well, I've seen it so many times. I'm kind of getting bored of it now. But it is a very good film, I'll be honest with you. It's not like... I, I know that the, the thing with this film is that I think with certain people it's becoming a little bit more polarising. Um, the film was a huge success, don't get me wrong, and the film is incredibly well made. But the thing with Titanic, which is different to films like A Night to Remember, is that it focuses on a love story between them and using the Titanic as the setting, which is not what you'd expect from a film called The Titanic. Um I mean, using the using the actual replication of the boat um, is a very good idea, and it, and the boat looks amazing. But the thing about this film is that it focuses on the love story, and yes, while it does show the boat and a lot of stuff on the boat, it doesn't really kind of. I suppose with some people, some people's eyes, it doesn't catch um, their attention as much as it should do. A night to remember from 1958, I think, is called from 1958 as well. I th um, managed to. Um, kind of like bring back people's minds to the Titanic because of how popular that film was when it came out in 1958. Um, I do have on, I do have a DVD of it. It's a very good film, very very good film. Um, if you if you do like the Titanic and you kind of like your little older kind of black and white films, A Night to Remember from 1958 is the film to look into because it is a Titanic film. It isn't romantic, um, but it does it, it focuses more on the actual Titanic. Um, it does have a few oddities and a few kind of misconceptions, but it's still a very good film. So there we go. The tape um, is there. But yeah, the stranger thing about this, um, what's in here, is that you have like a regular kind of label here from uh, from 20th Century Fox advertising. There's a full Monty there advertising a bunch of stuff, which is fair enough. And then it also advertises Anastasia, which is a very good film. I have it on DVD. It's a very good film, Anastasia. But it also came with this very weird leaflet for makeup and whatnot, which I no idea. I've never understood it. I've no idea why it's like that. Bunch of stuff there. Is the Titanic cover the same as Brokeback Mountain? Probably not. I have no idea. I've not seen Brokeback Mountain. Um, why is Leonardo stiff and sniffing her neck? I, said, I mean, thanks for putting that image off. Um, said that he hated Independence Day from 1996, but Independence Day 2 in 2016 is way worse than the original. I've not seen Independence Day 2. I honestly think that Independence Day 2 was a bit of a kind of here's a thing kind of movie, but I've not seen it. And um, I don't really pay attention to any of these. Do, uh, I just got another question there. What was the question? We just got up a little bit. Does it have the International 925, 20th Century Fox Entertainment logo? Yes, all of these um, home, uh, 20th Century Fox releases. Uh, there you go, down there. All of them have the Home Entertainment uh, logo on it, the international version. All of them have it. Um, but there's two of them. They have the kind of... There's two of them. I don't know how to describe them. I can't be able to describe them, but there we go. What's next? Um, oh, yes. Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. I've been kind of... 
Honestly, I'm not going to lie. I like this film. I don't think it's terrible. I don't think it's as bad as everyone else makes it to be. I hate Jar Jar Binks, but this film is pretty good. Um, I, there's not really much to talk about with this film, really, um, if you haven't seen it. But yeah, I think the reason why this film was so kind of... Well, when, when the film first came out, I remember like everyone loved it. But then after looking at it again, they were like, ugh. And then people started hating it again. But I've always liked Star Wars Episode One. It's definitely not the best Star Wars film, and it's nowhere near the best. But I think it's all right. I think it's still kind of entertaining. The pod race scene is very, very entertaining. Um, the cast is very good, apart from Jar Jar Binks. Um, and um, yeah, I think I honestly think the film isn't too bad. This cost me 99p, so it was a very cheap take to get. Um, but it's it's nice to have. It's nice to have. I do have plans to get some of the other Star Wars takes at some point but not yet. I'm still waiting to see if I can get episode three, which was released on VHS, believe it or not, but that's stupidly rare, like a hundred quid. So probably not worth getting yet. Um, but there we go. The Star Wars saga confuses you. Yeah, it's, I mean, if you're not a fan of Star Wars, it can be a bit conflicting. Um, I mean, actually, if we go back to the, if we go back to the uh, Star Wars tape, um, it says, return to a galaxy far, far away in the first chapter of the mythic Star Wars saga so um there we go came out 16 i think 16 years or so after episode six um but it's honestly not too bad i honestly think it's okay if i were giving it a rating out of 10 i would give it like a six it's not terrible um there are definitely flaws with it but it isn't the worst star wars film out there well we've got a few rarities coming up now um oh yeah i'll just, just show this one first mash from 1970. MASH is one of the very, very, very few war films that I've seen that take place during the Korean War, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. I can't tell because there's nothing on the back. This is a magnetic VHS release of it. Magnetic Video being one of the first companies to ever release movies on VHS, and this is no exception. This tape is from 1979, making it the oldest VHS in my entire collection. Uh, this tape was not actually that expensive. It was like eight quid. Um, and it's a pretty good tape as well. There's a bit of tape at the bottom here, which I've just kind of used to, because it's a bit bent and everything. It has been a bit butchered every now and um, here and there, but it's all right. The tape's in nice condition as well. Um, MASH is a very conflicting film, honestly. I remember when I first watched it, I wasn't paying that much attention to it, so I probably should give it a rewatch. I might get a DVD of it uh, at some point. But there's also a huge TV show, but many people seem to be a bit confused why there's a film called MASH, and they think it's like... Um, I think it was made after the TV show because the TV show ran for like 11 seasons from 1972 to 1983, I think, and was hugely successful, unbelievably, unbelievably successful. One of the best, um, one of the most successful American TV shows ever. Um, and MASH, the film, came out in 1970, which was based on a book from 1968. So it's a very kind of conflicting period. And lots of people seem to kind of believe that the film came out after the TV show, and some people don't even know there is a film called MASH, and they only know about the TV show. The film itself, which is 111 minutes long according to this tape, is alright. It's um, it's a pretty good film, from what I can remember. I need to rewatch it, though. It has been a very long time since I've seen this specific tape, um, but I will show this, um, show this film again to other people, because I think it's a pretty good film. I think it's a pretty good film, but I need to rewatch it myself first. There's a bunch of the magnetic tapes there. Magnetic tapes are rare as hell. They're very expensive certain ones. I have seen loads of them available. There's actually a rare own version of this film from 1981, um, which I've only seen like once or twice. Um, but it isn't uh, doesn't come up as that often. And also one thing that I absolutely hate about these carton releases as they're known, even though in the US they call them slip covers, which makes more sense, honestly. Um, the uh, They're quite rare to come across. Um, you, don't, you don't see them every now and you don't see them that often um, in their original um, in the original uh, carton. Often they're cut. They're like kind of just kind of cut on the sides and then just stuck into a normal tape, which is kind of annoying because it, it makes it kind of I ignore them, all of them. I remember seeing one for a for a film called On Golden Pond. Um, it was a precision video release, and those are very rare to come across these days. And then person and one person cut them up, and I was like, no, don't do that. It ruins them. Like, I don't know how you'd like be able to, I don't know how like you'd lose them anyway, because it's not like um I mean, it, it, it's thin plastic, I uh, think thin plastic, thin cardboard, but it isn't easy to kind of rip them apart. Like, it does take a bit of force. This one's a bit more ruined, as you can see from the spines. 
Um, but this is a 1981 VHS release of Saturday Night Fever. This is quite a corker. I got this for quite cheap, thankfully. One of the cheaper ones that was available at the time I bought it. So I'm happy I got this. Um, and it's a pre-cert version. I like Saturday Night Fever and I like CIC. So I thought yeah, I might as well get this version. Very, very rare and smells quite bad as well. Um, it's not as bad as you think it is. It's not, it's not like it's killing me or anything. But um, yeah, there's a label there. It's all right. It keeps opening a little bit at the top. If I just kind of force it out, if I just just just, just notice the top there. Oh, I didn't do it that time. Hang on. Kind of opens up a little bit, if you can see there. But it's fine. There we go. Very popular film. Obviously, this was parodied in Airplane, if you remember. Uh, this tape's all right, though. I might have to go wash my hands afterwards, though, because that film is a little bit kind of. It smells like it came from a from a from a home that. Um, from a smoke from from a from a home that where someone smokes um anyway next up is angela's ashes pretty interesting film i can't remember what i said about it when i first showed this but this film has changed uh, my opinion on this film has changed quite a bit i think this film is not too bad um i think it's pretty good but many people i know like hate it or whatever kind of a confusing film at first though i didn't really understand it at first but it's actually a pretty decent film that's a cardboard release there from 2000. The film's from 99. Um, I think it was a big success. Oh, Jesus. I think the film was like a pretty big success when it first came out. Mm. One of the year's most beautifully crafted films. Excuse me, it says at the top there, from The Heat magazine. The film is beautifully shot and the performances are uniformly excellent from um, Empire there. The Irish Times says, the film is shot through with great humanity and a rich, a rich sense of humour. So there we go. Don't really like the cover of it, though, obviously. It's kind of a bit of a scary boy. But um, it's a vital character from the film. So there you go. What's next? Um, kind of standard stuff. These are all universal tapes now. I might as well show these ones are like all at once. We have uh, Jurassic Park, um, which I do like. Uh, we have Schindler's List. There we are. There's Schindler's List. Just move them a little bit. Uh, we have... The Sting. There's that. Oh, they've all fallen over now. We have The Green Mile, which, if you know me, you'll know it's my favourite film. So there's those four. I can't get them all in one shot. Um, that'll probably have to do. I don't know. But there we go. I'll just show you three of them first. There you go. Just move these across. Ignore that one for now. Just so yeah, Jurassic Park, Shimmer's List, and The Sting. All three are pretty good films. Um, I didn't like Jurassic Park as much as I thought I would when, it, when I first watched it. Schindler's List, one of my favourite films of all time. And The Sting um, is a pretty good film. Very complex plot, but it is very good. Nice heist film, um, if you're wondering what that is. So there we go. We just um, pop those uh, there. The Green Mile is one of my favourite, if not, no, it, it, it is my favourite film of all time. Uh, On Golden Pond is a very close, uh, very close. Honestly, it was very, very close to overtaking it. I won't lie. I do love old Go I do love on Golden Pond, um, but the Green Mile. I, I love. I love the Green Mile. I have. Um, I don't know if I did show this one. I can't remember what it, what what going on with the Green Mile video. I don't know. What are you guys on about? Am I, have I missed something? Or I didn't show this one last time, did I? Did I show this one last time? I can't remember. I can't remember. If, I don't think there's anything going on. I don't know. Anyway. Um, but yeah, The Green Mile, one of my favourite films of all time. There, if not my, uh, I think my, I think my views on The Green Mile have changed a little bit since I first watched it. It's been a very long time. Um, it, it's been a kind of, um, well, yeah, it's a good film. It's a very, very good film. It's three hours long, so it's pretty long, but uh, it's damn good. Um, there we go. There. If if you like your um kind of um, nineteen thirties style, uh, sort of like drama films this is one of them to get it's it's such a sad film though such such a sad film um but there we go it genuinely made me cry so much when i first watched this but it is a very good film one of my, one of my favorites if not the uh absolute favorite film from mine uh there we go what's next oh that's just been unplugged i'm just going to turn that down uh, let me just plug that back in in a second. We get these other three tapes. Ah, yes. I mean, isn't really much to expect here, is it? I mean, the thing is, 
I've talked about Jaws so much in my life that it does come off as a little bit kind of like I'm addicted to Jaws. I am. I love Jaws. I think it's brilliant. Um, this is a 2003 VHS release of it. Obviously, there are loads of other versions. I think this might be the second to last or the last version that was released on VHS in 2003. Um, obviously, there are loads of other films um, like Jaws, because obviously with the whole kind of killer shark thing that everyone seems to copy off these days. There we go. The Pianist, another brilliant film from 2002. It's a war film, but it is very, very good. Lots of people that I talk to actually prefer The Pianist to Schindler's List, and I'm nearly there with them. Uh, I do kind of like The Green Mile slightly more, but The Pianist is a brilliant film. It's slightly shorter as well, I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken. How long is it? Uh, two hours, 23 minutes, whereas uh, Schindler's List is over three hours. So this one's a bit shorter. So there we go. And we have Shaun of the Dead. Um, yeah, I mean, I remember getting this quite a while ago. Absolutely love Shaun of the Dead. Very, very good film. Uh, Quantico Trilogy, obviously. Simon Pegg. Um, Edgar Wright. Absolutely brilliant. And um, quite rare to come across, actually, these days. Um, kind of taped from 2004. Usually, anyway. But this one is an exception. Um, the, the Shaun of the Dead is relatively easy to get. Um, it's like, I mean, this costs like four quid. It's a bit broken and everything. You can kind of hear it there. Kind of a bit kind of glitchy. Well, not glitchy. Um, just a bit broken, but there we go. Very, very nice, though, Shaun of the Dead. 2004, one of the, if not the oldest tape in my collection, I think. It's up there as one of the older ones I have. Let me just try and stack them in the correct order, which is now the wrong order. That's supposed to be on top. I can't remember how I do this now. Wait, wait, wait. No, I can need to put that one on that, that one on that, that one on that. There we go. So I can hold them like this, and then it'll go in the correct order. Right. I'm confusing myself now. Right. Now we get on to, like, well, another trilogy. But it's not necessarily like a relatable, la relatable trilogy. But I kind of have no choice to show these ones anyway. Um, we have that. That and that. These are all football ones. Don't pay attention to them. Just going to give you a few seconds to look at them. All right, there we go. Right, moving on. I, I, I don't really pay. I don't really care about football. So, yeah. Um, what's next? Um, oh yeah. Citizen Kane. Absolutely love Citizen Kane. Um. I mean, do I do I love this film? I would say I do. It's not like I don't know, but it's good. I'll say that much. It is a very good film. It did definitely popularize and and it had it, you know it was a very very popular film when it first came out. Lots of stuff in this one. There's even a receipt as well when it, when I when I got this because it was brand new when I bought this, and it even comes with a very nice booklet, um, which is very nice. Bunch of stuff in there. Um, the case also came with this kind of weird plastic tape holder thing, which I have kept um, because just just in case, really, it's nice to have. But there we go. Nope. And I know some people that do not like Citizen Kane, but it's all right. When was this bought again? Um, tw 27th of December, 1999. That's not when the tape came out. That's when the seller that I bought it from bought it. Um, it was brand new when I bought it. It was like, it's like four quid as well. So there we go. Pop everything in there. Get that in there. There we go. Citizen Kane. Very, very good film, Citizen Kane. I would say that views on Citizen Kane have changed quite a bit over the years, but it's still a pretty good film. Um, I think that it's kind of like become slightly less popular over time. Um, most people don't seem to be, well, most people around my age don't seem to be interested in it, but. There we go. I've shown this one before. I'm just going to skip past this one very quickly. This one is New Zealand Video Tours Coast to Coast. Um, I've shown this one many, many times. I hate the packaging so much. Moving on. Um, no, I'm just going to show this on the back of the New Zealand. It is a New Zealand tape. The only New Zealand tape in my collection. But there we go. Uh, let me just change that. 
The BBFC have recently changed the look of their rating. I have noticed that. They um I have a I have a blue rave airplane and that's got the newer rating on it. This one is a good favorite of mine. I do think this film is brilliant in many, many ways. And if you if you know me, you know I do love Monty Python, so Monty Python and the Holy Grail. This is the um, third Monty Python film that I have. Uh, I have the others as well, Life of Brian and uh, Meaning of Life, which I showed in part one. Uh, I've shown um, Life of Brian. Actually, I'll get Life of Brian back just in case you've, you've forgot what it looks like, which you probably have because we're moving quite quickly. There we go. There's Life of Brian, there's Holy Grail. Uh, this is a, one of the rarest VHS tapes in my collection. Quite rare, as, uh, quite rare in the sense that it's expensive. Um, it's quite a quite a beast. I think is the best way of saying it. It's not really a tape that many people would say that they have. At least this version. There are many versions of Holy Grail, but this is the Priester version from 1980. Apparently, it's from Brent Walker. If you can uh, see that up there, there's a the Brent Walker BW thing there. Um, but it's quite rare to come across. Not really the greatest version, but it was what was available. So. I bought it. There you go. There it used to be a please rewind sticker here, and someone's taken off, and it's just got left 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 a little bit of the adhesive. Um, but there we go. Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Very very nice though. Didn't pay too much for it, but there we go. Uh, next up, one of the um, one of the better tapes in my collection. One of my favourites. Oh, tightrope. I've always wanted to get into kind of Clint Eastwood films, and this one was one that came up. Um, it didn't cost me that much at all, to be fair to you, and it's Dutch, which is insane um, to me, absolutely insane to me, it, the fact that it's Dutch. Didn't even know it was Dutch until I had like a look into it. Um, it's, it comes in like an original case as well, or the home video case there. It is the only, well, in the kind of VHS community, they would call this kind of packaging the Big W packaging because of the uh, Big W that's on the side there um, from Warner Brothers. There we go. Let's count the stickers, shall we? One, two, three, four. The hi-fi sticker doesn't count. Five, six, seven, eight. There's an eighth one there that's come off. Nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, uh, 14. There's one here that you can't really see well. Well, 15, 16, not counting the labels, 17. 17 stickers. Unbelievable stuff. Lots of stickers on that one to turn out the other way around. There we go. There we go. Clint Eastwood tightrope. Very good film, tightrope. I do like it. There we go. No idea why I've got so many stickers. It really shouldn't have so many stickers, but, you know, it is what it is. Am I going in order? Have I missed any? I can't tell because it's bright down. It's quite dark in my room now, so... Have I missed any? Am I going in the correct order? I think I am, yes. That one's next. Okay. This one is next. I just didn't realise. It is getting quite dark in my room now. I should probably get my light on. Um, Next one is a soldier's story um this is another war film from uh 1984 um and this is the only uh one of the very few rca columbia pictures tapes that i have try to get rid of the uh the mold uh, there's a bit of mold in here that i didn't we couldn't really get rid of it i haven't got rid of the tape yet though i do want to get an, an upgraded version of it and then probably just like keep the, the tape and everything in case i need it for spares or anything so i should hopefully get an upgraded version of this film but it hasn't come up that often, so I will get around to getting a better version of it, of A Soldier's Story. It's a good film, A Soldier's Story. Um, I remember watching it at some point anyway, and it's a very good film. Very nice war, World War II film. from nine, it, it's, a, it's a film that takes place in 1944. So, um... There we go. There we are. Uh, what's next? Um, ooh. Um, you may remember, in part one, I showed Beverly Hills Cop 1. Uh, this is the sequel that I have. That's my phone light. Beverly Hills Cop 2. Um, this is the sequel to Beverly Hills Cop. It still stars Eddie Murphy, which is great. The heat's back on, as it nicely says. This is a big box. Not the original box, though. Um, it's a virgin box. Last time I checked, anyway. Uh, yes. 
which is a virgin box. Maybe it's just insulting me every time I open it. Um, but there we go. So BASF tape, like the original. Uh, I don't know if you can see that at all. BASF there. I'm kind of using the light from both of my monitors to kind of show these tapes now. It's weird. It's getting very late outside, very dark outside. A few uh, rental stickers and everything. Big box, um, but it's quite nice. Quite a pain to get in though sometimes, that one. But there we go. Spine there. There's the back, another couple of stickers. Um, how long is this? 99 minutes, I believe, last time I checked. Yeah, 99 minutes. So it's not that long at all. I think it's a bit shorter than the first one. If you haven't seen Beverly Hills Cop 1 or 2, check them out. The third one is terrible, as far as I'm aware. Um, don't get the third one. Just have a look at the first two, because apparently the first two are very good um, from many people. Many critics love the first one, and I do too. I do love the first one. Next up, I, I don't even know why I bought this one. Another Dutch VHS, this one, Help. It's a 1990 television show from America, which I pay a little bit of like homage to. I thought it was pretty interesting. Had a look, and this is one of the tapes that came up. Um, again, with the CIC tape there. There's the uh, spine there, all yellow. It's actually a CIC, is it, I don't know how we pronounce it. A CELT? I actually don't know how you would pronounce that. There we go. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's another Dutch tape. CIC. It's got a yellow lid, the yellow door, which is very unique. I do love that. Um, in case you're wondering, it is a Dutch tape, but it's Brit. It's a, it's a, it's in, it's in English, but it does have like uh, Dutch subtitles. So there we go. I'm trying to look and pop this back in here without causing too much damage to it. Oh, is that in? I don't know. It is in. There we go. There's the back there. It is in Dutch. I did translate a little bit of it, but I can't remember much to about. Uh, it's like, um, yeah, it's a, it is in Dutch. I can't really read it that well, but I, I can understand like a little bit of it because the, the Dutch language and the English language, they are kind of similar with a few certain words. But there we go. Up next is, ah, yes. One of my favorite films from Tom Hanks. Cast Away from 2000. Uh, I remember uh, first seeing this film when I was about uh, 13 years old. That was the first time I came aware of this film. I was writing an, a story for English about um, um, about you know just like desert, uh, going to a desert island, and I based my story off Cast Away um, after kind of watching the film for the first time and found it incredibly entertaining. Um, although the story was posted by was a boat, we mentioned how like it was a boat that was kind of hit by like a storm or something. In the film, it's a plane, obviously. So I kind of just ignored the whole plane thing and then went with like what happens on the island, like do I you know like him struggling? And then I talk about like you know my character kind of just trying to find like materials to use and whatnot. Very very um, kind of it was almost like writing like a sequel almost to Castaway to um, to kind of accompany it. But it was very 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 worth worth, worth doing and. The film was good. Um, the film was brilliant, and I had to get a VHS of it at some point, and there we go. It is a, it is a rental, not from Blockbuster, but it is a rental from somewhere in Essex. I don't live in Essex. Um, but there we go. Castaway. There's the back there. And there's the spine there. If you haven't seen Castaway, please do have a look at Castaway. It's a very good film. One of the better films from Robert Zemeckis. It's one of the better films that he's done. You may remember that he directed the Back to Future films. I think he did anyway, if I'm not mistaken. But there we go. Very, very good film. Uh, and my last big box, these have all been big boxes, which is why I've got them all like together, is X-Men. This, <laughs> I love X-Men. I remember first getting into them only a few months back. It was like November, December time. A friend of mine from school and I were just like discussing like films. Um, and uh, she said to me that she has like a massive fixation with the X-Men films and I hadn't seen any at the time. So I thought, you know, might as well. Uh, watch a few of them. We did have a few on DVD in the house. So I've, I've got those in my room. So I've watched those and they were pretty entertaining. And I decided to get uh, the first X-Men film on VHS. But I got this one for a very specific reason. Not because it's like a, a big box or anything, but for the fact that it's a Blockbuster rental, as you can tell from the sticker. But, you know, Blockbuster rentals, okay, well, it's just going to have a Blockbuster sticker or anything, is it? Well, it might do. But what if it's blue? Yeah, so this is a blue version, which is even rarer from what I can gather. This is, um, as you can see, it's a Blockbuster rental. As you'll know, I do love Blockbuster. Um, I have like Blockbuster bags and everything in my room. I do love Blockbuster. I've, got, I've even got a Blockbuster membership card. So I do love Blockbuster. Even though I didn't grow up with it that much, 
you know, memories of going to the Blockbuster store on occasion and renting a film. Oh, what a day. Um, and this is from, this is a D from a Blockbuster store. And it's in a blue, and it's a blue tape. And I think it's pretty cool. Didn't cost that much. Came very quickly. Came in very good condition. Um, wow, what a difference. I mean, yeah, this is different. You very rarely see blue Blockbuster tapes. They're normally just regular black tapes, but with the Blockbuster sticker. I have seen a couple of other, like, blue ones. Um, but... Um, yeah, don't really come out, don't really come across uh, them as much. Quite light as well. One thing I do like about this one is that the actual plastic that they use for the tape, since it's a different color, you can kind of see through it slightly. You don't, you won't be able to pick it up on camera, but on like certain like bits of it, you can kind of see through it because of how thin the plastic is, which is kind of cool. Uh, you won't be able to pick it up on the on the um, on the thing, but there we go. There's X Men there. Very, very nice. Very happy with that one. The next bunch are all um, Alfred Hitchcock films, I believe. Uh, yes, they are all Alfred Hitchcock films. This is going to be... A... Okay, I'm going to try so I can lift this up. It's probably just worth getting, like, showing all of them at once. Um, but then just talking through them individually. Trying so I can pick this up. They all came in a box. Oh, God. They're really heavy. I don't think it's going to show up on camera that well, but we'll give it a go. There we go. Is that all of them? That's all of them. Just about all of them. Um, this is a collection, a massive box. Um, it's the Alfred Hitchcock Centenary Collection. It was to celebrate his 100th anniversary, uh, 100th birthday, um, when he was... Well, he, well, he didn't live until 100. He was born in 1899 in Leytonstone in London, and then died in 1980 at the age of 80 in America um, because, you know, he made these all American films. So to celebrate his 100th birthday, Universal Pictures, as you can see from the, uh, from the top there, all Universal, they just re-released a bunch of his films so they had the rights to. Not all films from Alfred Hitchcock are currently owned by Universal. These ones are, um, but not all of them are. Uh, some of them, like Psycho and Vertigo, were not made with Universal. They were made with Paramount. But they got the rights to them shortly afterwards. Um, I don't know, because of probably like a deal or something. I don't know. But here's all of them. Rope from 1948. The Man Who Knew Too Much from 1954 or 55, I think. The Trouble with Harry from 1954 or 55 or 56, one of them. Vertigo from 1968, uh, 1958, sorry. Psycho from 1960. The Birds from 1963. Marnie from 1964. Torn Curtain from 1966. Topaz from 1969 and Frenzy from 1972. So, um, yeah, these are all like his best films. I suppose you can say the best films. And there are some great ones in here. I study Vertigo and I did look at Psycho as well when I was studying Vertigo. So I have like a huge soft spot for Vertigo. Obviously, I have a DVD of it because convenience. I'll get this one out. Bit of a pain. Oh, there we go. There's Vertigo there. There's the cover there. Um, interesting story about this box set, though, is that when I got my tape for Vertigo, it didn't actually have... It, the box was empty, so I had to get another version. This tape is not... Uh, the box is in not very good condition, as you can see. I might have to kind of just see down there how mucky it is. Um, I will probably end up getting rid of the box at some point and just keeping the tapes because it's kind of left my wall a little bit messy and a little bit mucky, so I should probably get rid of the box at some point or clean the box out and the wall. Um, I might do that actually after the stream and uh get all these tapes i think some of these is not some of these will need to be rewound um but but there we go and all of the all of them are pretty good films i haven't i haven't seen all of these in a very long time though but psycho and vertigo are my favorites the birds is pretty good rope as well i think rope is a brilliant brilliant film that um one of his older ones um that was in color i think it might have been his first in color and it is absolutely brilliant um rope if you haven't seen rope please Please get Rope, because it is a brilliant film. I do love Rope. North by Northwest as well, which isn't in this collection because it was made by MGM and they didn't get the rights to them. Um, yeah, so obviously since some of them, some of these were not made through Universal, but obviously Universal got the rights to them. So there we go. There's also that one single 18 down there. All of the others are PG and 15, as you can see, and then there's just like that 18 down there. Just, just there. But there we go. This box is stupidly heavy as well. They're quite long films as well. Like a lot of these are over two hours. Uh, some of them are over two hours. I think most of them are like pretty short. Rope's pretty short, actually. How long is Rope? Rope is one of the shorter ones he did. 
77 minutes. 77 minutes. It's one of the shorter ones. Um, I think Vertigo is like over two hours. Psycho is an hour and 40, I think. But there we go. Oh. Now, technically speaking, this would be the end of this video because all the other tapes in my collection are all kind of personal ones. Um, like home recorded ones that I have in my room, which I don't really want to show for personal reasons, obviously. Um, but I'm not really going to, I'm not going to show them. I'm not going to show those personal ones. But one thing I am going to do is um, just kind of go back through these ones and just kind of talk about, about the films a little bit um, with a few of the others that I haven't done. Even To be fair, I have done that with pretty, pretty all of them. Okay, screw that plan. I think we're going to end the stream here because even though these, the, I mean, I have like, there's like 15 others, but they're all uh, recorded tapes. See, I think what I should do is probably just like change the name of the of the streams and everything to 140, just so that people don't get confused why I've only shown like um, why I've only shown like some of them um, and not all 155. So I'll just do that just to make sure people are not confused. So 140. I'll change that to 140. One. Four, three. Okay. See, I'm just going to do that with the others. Well, you can have a look at my hand. Actually, I'll have. A, I'll give you a tape to look at. Um, all right, here's X Men. Have a look at that. Whilst I just um, organise these and just fix these, fix these as well. Just make sure I just fix all these names. Can't seem to. Um, Okay, you know what? I'll do it afterwards. I'll do it afterwards. But I think that's going to be the end of this stream because I'm tired. Um, but I was just going to say a huge thanks to like everyone as well that's kind of watched all these and seen through them. What would you say about the reboot of Psycho from 1998? Um, not really that good, from what I can remember. It's not great. I know that much about it. And you know what? I might as well just ask a bunch of questions that you guys have. I'm just going to put this up. I might as well just ask a bunch of questions. There we go. If any of you have got any questions, then just by all means ask them. But that's like the end of the VHS collection. I'll just stay on for like an extra 15 minutes or so. When are you going to stream again? Good question. I do not know. Um, probably. Oh, that's a good question. Um, I would say it... Um, God, I don't know. Um, it's the seventeenth of April. Um, I would say probably around like at the end of May. I would say around about the end of May, maybe a little bit before. It's your least favorite movie. Do you enjoy making these bitches collection live streams? I mean, I I have, yes. I've enjoyed them going through the collection. And to be fair, you guys seem to be pretty interested in them as well. Even though a lot of you... A lot, I know that a lot of you do collect VHS tapes. And, you know, it's always nice to kind of go through someone's collection. Uh, thank you, Cat, uh, for joining me. Um, what is your least favourite movie? Oh, um... I don't have a least favourite, but there are a bunch of films that I hate. Like, absolutely despise. Pearl Harbor is one of them. The 2017 Mummy film, I absolutely despise. Um, the sequel to the Blues Brothers film, Blue Brothers 2000. I hate that film so much, you have no idea. Um, so those are some of my, those are the ones that I kind of hate. Are there any other films that I really just hate? Uh, I don't know. Well, I can name, like, a bunch of films that I know, like, are really bad like Trapped, as I've mentioned, or Cool Cat Saves the Kids. But I haven't seen Cool Cat Saves the Kids, and Trapped is a film that everyone knows is bad. But I know some people that do like those kind of films, but on um, kind of like on a so bad that it's good kind of thing. But no, I, I all of the films that I hate, I think I actually just hate. The Emoji Movie is a film that's terrible, don't get me wrong, it's a very terrible film, but it is very colourful and bright. And I think that it is somewhat entertaining in terms of its like visuals. I think the visuals of the Emoji movie are really good, but the actual story and everything is just terrible. Um, 
Police Brothers 2000 is mediocre at best. No, it isn't. It's worse. Oh, Food Fight as well. Food Fight is Food Fight is terrible. Food Fight is absolutely terrible. I hate Food Fight. That's another one I hate. Um, how do you manage to get PBS affiliated stations in the UK? We don't. We don't have PBS stations in the UK. PBS state PBS is an American thing. In the UK, we don't have anything like that. We just have like BBC, ITV, Channel Four, Channel Five, that kind of thing. UK TV, you know, the actual company called UK TV. Um, so we don't actually have like PBS stations. We don't have them at all. So, um, but yeah, food, food fight is God. God, Jesus, just un, just so bad, so so bad. Absolutely hate it. I wouldn't even say that the idea for the emoji movie is that good anyway. Like the the idea behind the emoji movie isn't good. Like it's a bad idea. Like, well, I suppose to an extent it is kind of interesting, but I suppose, yeah. Bubbleheads, haven't seen it. Uh, do you watch BBC? I mean, it's kind of like a legal requirement over here, really, to watch BBC. I mean, it's not really, but there is a station called PBS America. I don't even think we have that over here, PBS America. I know that PBS America is, like, said to be British, but I've not really heard of it outside of, like, regular PBS stuff, so I don't know. I've not really looked into it. Can't bother to either. Um, that's not, that's not to say it doesn't exist. It, it might exist. I just haven't haven't looked. Probably should have a look at Bobbleheads at some point if it's an actual film that's pretty interesting. Or am I thinking of another film? I feel like I'm. I'm thinking. I feel like I'm thinking of another film that begins with like where the title is something head. I just can't remember what it is. Uh -huh. I'll have to have a look at that at some point. Speed 2 Cruise Control is worse than Speed 1. I haven't seen either of them. Surprisingly, no, I haven't seen Speed. I feel like I should, though, because I do like the idea of Speed, like the concept behind it. I should probably, like, watch it at some point. Um... But yeah, I, I, just, I just don't... Eh. I should probably... I, I need to watch a lot more films. Like... I the thing with me is that I choose the films to watch. I'm not really kind of like I don't force myself to watch something. I'm not dragged into conversations about films. Like I will only talk about I will only talk about the films that I have heard of or that I've actually seen. So if someone mentions a film that I've not seen, I, I won't talk about that film because you know what's the point? Um Speed is a good movie, but never watch the second one. It's trash. Okay. I'll keep that in mind. I don't know how... I mean, I don't know why you'd want to make a sequel to Speed to Speed anyway. Because when you think about it, it doesn't really need to exist. Um, I just don't understand from what I can gather, really. I know like, there, are, like, there are like certain sequels that just don't need to be made. I mean, Blues Brothers 2000 is definitely another one. That shouldn't have been made. I actually just hate how Blue Brothers 2000 came out in 1998, and it's called 2000. Doesn't make any sense. Doesn't take place in 2000, as far as I'm as far as I'm aware. Why couldn't they just call it Blue Brothers 2? Or why can they just not make it? I hate Blue Brothers 2000. I hate it. My lips are a bit dry. I need to go get a drink. Um... Really, the films. I mean, I'm, Golden Pond was good. War Games is pretty good. That was a film I watched yesterday. I need to add that to my list. Very, very good. Um, there are a lot of other films. I honestly, I mean, over this week's Easter break, I've just been kind of relaxing. Really, like I know I go back to school on Monday, so I need to kind of like sort myself out and everything. But you know, it's just like I've been relaxing. I mean, I'm going to get on with a few things for school uh, in like an hour's time or whatever. I think for the time being, I'm going to end the stream and then like do a few things. The only point of sequels and spin-offs is because of money. No, not necessarily. That is often a reason why some sequels are made, like the the Smurfs too. Like that's just a way of getting more money. But a lot of the time, uh, sometimes sequels are made to extend the the franchise, or because it's kind of like a book series where like if they're gonna if the if the first one is successful, they'll make a second one, like the Harry Potter films or like Twilight. So it's like, if the first one was successful, um, critically and or financially, they'll make a second one. 
just to follow on from the story. What about cars? Cars, is a, I, I like the first cars. I do have a soft spot for the first cars. I hate the second one uh, quite a bit. Uh, although the second one is good in some ways. I don't know why, but I remember when I first watched it, I was like, I do, I, I when I first watched it, I was like a very young age, I really enjoyed it, but I don't know, I mean, it's one of those films where it's just like, eh, just, it's just eh, just eh. Um, um, being on YouTube and movies, don't really pay much attention to them, honestly. I mean, a lot of the times, YouTube movies are literally just there to show off random things that aren't really that interesting, so I have not really bothered with a lot of them. Um, Warcraft, I haven't seen it. So. Anyway, what time is it we're coming up to? I think we're going to end the stream here, because, yes. Um, I've got to sort out a couple of things. I'm getting tired. Um, but yeah, thank you very, very much for watching all three parts. If you've sat through all three parts and watched like all three and kind of talked to me about all these VHS tapes and everything, I do really appreciate it. Thank you very, very much for that. Um, I have a Discord server where I I, I I post images and clips of whatnot of the tapes that I've just recently got. So if you haven't joined my Discord server, if you go back to the main Discord page on the About section, you'll see a Discord link, and there's my server. So by all means, join my server if you want to. We always, there's always, it's always like, it's always nice to have like new people in there. Obviously you have to be like 13 or older to join it because of Discord rules and everything. So please do means, please by all means, join my server if you want to. Um, we always talk about films, always talk about tapes and everything. So if that kind of stuff intrigues you, then do join. Apart from that, thank you very, very much for watching this stream um, and the other streams as well. I really hope you enjoyed them. Um, and thank you uh, as well to those who have um, been in all three of them. Really appreciate that. Um, so there we go. Um, okay, that's weird. But yeah. Um, for now, I will see you all later. Take care.